me today to talk about uh, the executive order that I signed on February 22nd. First of all, I want to welcome uh, Legislator John Ferretti and Legislator Samantha Getz who are joining us and I appreciate the support of the legislature on all our efforts and of course uh, the former Olympia, Olympic gold medal champion Caitlin Jenner. Let's hear it for her. And Caitlin, we, we really appreciate you coming to join with us today because as I've said before, uh, my executive order has uh, one uh, goal and that is to make sure that competition is fair and safe here in Nassau County and that we protect women and girls so that when they train for an athletic competition, when they train to get on a team, when they're in a meet or a tournament, that they have the ability to compete fairly. And uh, again, what we've said is um, this is not anti-trans, this is protecting women and girls who are a protected class under federal law in the United States Constitution. And um, I was disappointed to uh, receive a uh, cease and desist order from Attorney General Letitia James, who basically said that we had to uh, cease and desist from enforcing the executive order, which again we feel is, um, is not only the right thing to do, but it is the legal thing to do, as women and girls are a protected class. And um, as a result thereof, I consulted with our lawyers who are here with us today, and um, uh, they uh, made a determination that not only was the executive order legal, uh, but that we had an obligation to defend it. And therefore, we initiated uh, an action in federal district court, the Eastern District of New York, uh, basically asking the court to put an order in, a preliminary injunction against uh, the attorney general from trying to enforce her cease and desist order and any other um, affirmative action that her office might take. So um, I want to also thank the Mullen family uh, who are co-plaintiffs in this lawsuit, this federal lawsuit. And as you might also know, uh, the New York Civil Liberties Union and others have uh, initiated a state court action of which uh, our same legal team uh, will be defending the county and the executive order in state court. And um, just to uh, tell you, uh, we are very confident that uh, the courts will make a determination that what we did is legal. And again, uh, we're, we're here to protect women and girls. We're, we're not here uh, to pick sides or to exclude anybody. Um, biological males who, who identify themselves as females have other outlets where they can compete. They can compete against other biological males. They can compete in a co-ed league. They can compete uh, in a transgender league if they choose to form one. But uh, we feel that it's not a level playing field when biological males uh, compete against women. It's not safe because biological males are bigger, stronger, and faster. And I'm very, very, uh, again, very happy to have this uh, American hero with us not only just a hero uh, in athletic competition, but a hero standing up for principles and things that she believes to be right and not being afraid to, to say what she feels and to say it very forcefully and very strongly. So um, without further ado, um, I'm very happy to welcome Caitlin Jenner to our county and uh, I'm going to turn the floor over to her. Thank you very much, Bruce. By the way, a good name. <laughs> In 1976, I won the Olympic decathlon, was declared the world's greatest athlete, and I did it in a world record performance in Montreal. And the reason I say that is because I have been around sports my entire life. I have seen every aspect of sports. I have seen the valleys, I've seen the peaks, 
I know the politics, the athletes, the coaches, the governing bodies, the media, the owners, the advertisers. I've worked with everybody. I have witnessed the growth in opportunity and uh, protection in women's sports, specifically in this country, with the adoption of Title IX um, in 1972. Now, let's kind of move forward about 50 years, and I have shared my struggle that I have dealt with my entire life with gender dysphoria. I decided to live my life publicly. I had no choice, I was a public figure as a trans person. I have empathy for all LGBT people, and I have a thorough understanding of all the struggles, no matter how different our circumstances may be. Today in this country, and in the world, we are at a crossroads. Athletic, athletic governing bodies, judicial systems, executive actions, legislative bodies are all grappling with how to handle the topic of trans athletes. It's on a massive scale. Specifically, the biological realities that exist that provide for advantages and even lead to physical harm when trans women or biological males compete in sports against women. In the United States, we have a president, Joe Biden, who has called for an amendment to Title IX as we know it. In effect, erases the protection and the hard fought battles that women have fought in sports. In New York, we have an activist attorney general, Letitia James, that alleges, and it seems to think that her state laws and preferences uh, supersede federal law, specifically Title IX and the 14th Amendment of the US Constitution, which guarantees no state shall deny a person equal protection under the law. When I competed, in 1972 and 76 Olympics, on behalf of the good old US of A, there was a clear problem. Some of you more mature people out there may remember this, but we had the East German women. We had the Soviet women that at that time, uh, I don't know, most of them didn't even identify. You looked at them, you didn't know what you were looking at, physically as women. Let me give you a brief little story. My last lifting workout, five days before I competed in Montreal, I go to the gym in the village and I am pumped up. I've been lifting weights heavy for 12 years. This is my last lifting workout. I'm going to max at every lift. And in walks this girl, uh, massive size. And she was an East German discus thrower, huge, I mean, Honestly, the pimples on her back, the whole thing, you know something was going on here. This girl outlifted me so bad it was a joke. And I said to myself, I gotta get out of this gym. I gotta go try to win the games in, in, in five days. And uh, the women are outlifting me in there. But that's what we were dealing with back then. Now, it's also a simple solution instituted by the IOC. And that is saliva tests, showing the DNA of the athletes. Women have to be XX. And it, it is done in a manner to protect the integrity of the competition. Today, the problem is even more clear. Trans women are competing against women, taking valuable opportunities for the uh, long protected class under Title IX and causing physical harm. The difference between men and women exists based on DNA or your chromosomes, which leads to our physical development, regardless of a trans person's hormone surgeries, status and transition, there are massive advantages and undeniable differences from male development, basically going through male puberty. The, the solution is simple. When it comes to athletics, participation, 
with the biological sex. You have to compete in the biological sex that you were born. This is critical to protecting the integrity of competition in, in women's sports. An example of these circumstances, well, they're endless. Um, I cover these stories, oh, it seems like on a day-to-day -day basis. This issue has no bounds, it has, it's worldwide, it's all over the US, at all levels of sports and every types of sports. I have covered swimming, golf, biking, track and field, hockey, football, uh, boxing, basketball, and today I'm gonna add a new one, volleyball, to the list. One of the plaintiffs in the uh, county's lawsuit is the Mullen family. Now, the Mullins, actually they're here, Mark and Janine, have a 16-year-old daughter who plays volleyball. Earlier, you may remember this on TV, in North Carolina, a high school girl volleyball player was spiked by a bi biological man in the head, causing her to fall to the ground with neck injuries and a devastating concussion. She recently made headlines when she testified in front of the North Carolina State Legislature saying, I may be the first to speak on, on this subject before you, but I'm not going to be the last. The Mullins family's daughter should not have to be worried about being the next person to have to speak out about this matter. We need families to speak up now. before something happens like what happened in uh, North Carolina. Now, you know, we, we talk about this issue and we say, oh, men and this and that. Let me just take a little break and, and tell you exactly what we're talking about here uh, in volleyball. You know, we think of it as a non-contact sport, but these are the statistics. Uh, first, the women's net is seven and a half inches lower, making it easier to spike. Now, the average height at a high level of, a, of a volleyball, men are eight inches taller than women, okay? And they can jump six inches higher, males, okay? Now, the average spike for the men, a good spike, is 82 miles an hour. The average spike for women, 64 miles an hour, 30% greater velocity playing men's. And that's why we have to protect women's sports. New York, New York State wants to pri uh, prioritize illusions like social affirmation and those trans people that we want to compete in, in with the women despite their biological merit characteristics and advantages. There is an entire place where they can either get harmed at the expense to the women and disregard women and girls. A federally protected class under Title IX that each state has to apply equal protection under the law according to the U.S. Constitution. In New York, right now in New York, it is unrecognizable. It's, I, I grew up here. It's living hellscape with the migrant crisis, rampant, violent crime. I mean, I was in California and I hear about somebody got shot in the head on the, on the subway system. And then as I'm leaving, I find out another one did. The National Guard is being deployed to the subways. Higher taxes, higher um, problems than that. Record amount of people and businesses leaving the state. Meanwhile, the female-led Attorney General's office has prioritized one thing, her political future. In New York, for all the New Yorkers are out there dealing with all the new harsh realities of living in New York City, the Attorney General goes from 
protecting a former, or prosecuting a former uh, president in the local court, and now has inserted herself into another hot topic that will get her more press coverage, more camera time, while um, pandering to her supporters under the guidance of inclusion and equity and using nothing but emotional appeals. Do not be fooled. This is an elected politician uh, perpetrating a political stunt against Nassau County. Title IX, the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, this AG um, has it there. She thinks that her state and her office is above U.S. law. Don't let this AG fool you and use you and use the LGBT people for political gain. New Yorkers know this is wrong. America knows this is wrong. You know, I was born in Mount Pisco, New York, and um, I have represented our nation uh, proudly as an Olympic champion of the world's greatest athlete. I flew here this morning to stand with Nassau County in their fight uh, for the protection of women and girls in sports. Let's lead the way for all sports. I would ask if the federal courts provide for a quick and speedy trial to protect women's sports once and for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so, so again, um, Caitlin, uh, thank you so much for coming to Nassau County and uh, you did spend uh, your youth in Westchester County. We won't hold that against you. That's okay. And uh, if you want, we can find you a real estate broker. We've got lovely homes here in Nassau County. Uh, I also want to again thank Sophia Hutchins and uh, Caitlin's staff uh, for help, helping in uh, facilitating uh, this appearance today. Uh, Caitlin is not going to take any questions at this time. She's going to uh, stand by uh, her statement, but I will take a few questions uh, if anybody has any questions at this time. No questions. Great. <laughs> Carolyn Gossoff. You know, that's a, that's a very fair question. And um, the reason why we did this at this time is because this is the point where we are now giving out permits and licensing uh, to use our facilities, our ball fields, our, our, uh, our swimming stadium, our, our um, other facilities that we have here in the county. And we heard from a lot of girls and a lot of women uh, that they were very, very unhappy with what was going on uh, around the country. And quite frankly, one of them said to me, you know, do, do we have to get injured uh, before anybody takes any action? So um, I made a determination that I wanted it to be clear and transparent to everybody uh, what our position was here in Nassau County so that you don't have to be in a situation where you get a uh, spike with a volleyball and get a concussion, where you don't have a situation like uh, occurred in New England where you have uh, a girls team where the coach found that it was so unsafe. Uh, they had this biological male who was basically tossing the girls around like they were flies. And he says, I'm not taking any more of it. Uh, some of my girls have gotten injured. I'm taking them off the court. You don't have to wait to get punched in the nose to take action in government. When you know there's an issue, when you know there's a problem, you should be proactive. And that's what we're doing. And again, um, there are avenues for transgender athletes to compete. And it's instructive to note that this is not a ban uh, 
against transgender female, who, biological females who are transgender. Uh, they can get compete against males because, again, the fairness issue isn't, isn't there. The safety issue isn't there. So um, this is about fairness and safety. And you know, basically, I, I think it's a bullying issue. I think biological males uh, who, who want to engage in athletics against biological females that don't want it, uh, it's, it's bullying. And quite frankly, um, we don't go for bullying of any kind here in Nassau County. We have every race, religion, ethnic group, and lifestyle here in Nassau County. We're a welcoming place, and we're a loving place. And uh, certainly, um, this is not to denigrate anybody. It's, it's to protect women and girls and the integrity of their sport and their safety here in Nassau County. I, I love your question. I just want to respond. If the left wants to fight this battle on this hill, it's a losing battle. This is an 80-20 issue. 80% 80 of the people out there do not want biological boys in women's sports. It's only 20%. I don't even know who they are. A 20% issue. And to be honest with you, if they want to fight this battle, they're going to lose. I mean, every day of my life, I walk through an airport, I, I walk downtown or something, people come up to me every day and say, thank you for being out there for, to protect women's sports. And I have been consistent with this right from the beginning, you know? And it's important that we protect women's sports. So it's, we will win the battle. Okay. Thank you all very much. You, you had a question, sir? Oh, yeah. I mean, um, I think Caitlin said it right. Every place I go, women are coming up to me. Uh, uh, our, our receptionist has been very busy fielding calls. They're probably nine to one in favor of the executive order. We, uh, we had a, a woman call the other day. Uh, she said, uh, I just want you to know I'm a lifelong Democrat. I'm a lesbian athlete, and I think Mr. Blakeman is right. So, uh, again, this, is, this, this isn't, um, uh, uh, it, it, and it shouldn't be a partisan issue. This is a common sense issue. What other athletes are you talking about? Sure. Well, uh, for obvious reasons, Caitlin's the star of the show. Uh, she's an Olympic hero. And uh, I'll tell you what, we've got, we've got a great legal team, but uh, I would tell my legal team to take everything that Caitlin said and put it in the brief because she made the argument that I think is the common sense, smart argument that outlines exactly what the law is and why the courts should protect what we're doing. Uh, Frank, can you explain the why? You know, why do you say that this is not the case? You know, this is the event that's happening right now. Why is someone actually straight up taking time to do this? Well, it is happening here right now. It's happening all across the United States. And uh, let me just yeah, make a statement. Go ahead. <laughs> I know. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I came here, and I've been on this passion for the last couple of years since swimming in at Penn State. You know, um, I'm passionate about it. It's amazing how much flack I get, and all I'm trying to do is protect women. You know, and but. This is a, um, just another area where we can promote women in sports. We can promote Title IX and the differences that and it has made for, for scholarships, for programs for women. There's so many more women that are competing now in sports. My fear is that if this woke agenda that's out there, you know, the DEI world that's out there, um, if this continues, it'll ruin women's sports over the next 20, 10, 20 years. Let's stop it now while we can. But what's gonna happen 20 years from now, 20 years from now when young girls are gonna wanna go out for sports and they're gonna say, oh, I don't wanna play girls sports, I have to play against the boys. It's just, it's not right. We need to stop it right now and make the rules. We are winning some bottles. Just last week, I did a piece on Fox um, 
that the NXXT tour, it's the women's golf tour, which is uh, the feeder tour for the LPGA, okay? Um, that, uh, back, go back a little bit, in 1950, the LPGA put into their, uh, when it was founded, put into their rules that you had to be female at birth. And that was good for 60 years. And then in 2010, the woke world got a hold of them and said, oh, let's just throw that out, okay? It's been, there's not a lot of trans golfers, you know, out there. Finally, 14 years later, it was first um, uh, challenged by Haley Davidson. And uh, so I kind of jumped in there, wrote an, wrote an op-ed piece uh, for the Daily Mail. And um, you always wonder when you do those, is anybody listening? Well, somebody was. Uh, Stuart McKinnon, who is the CEO of the NXT, um, went back to female at birth, uh, which I thought was, a, was just absolutely perfect. So the feeder series going to the LPGA, they, they won't, trans athletes will not be allowed to make that, that move. But there's only one in 14 years. It's not like this is a big issue. It's more of an issue of protecting women's sports. Okay, that's what we're out there trying to do. Thank you.